some viewers may find the following video disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. Hey everyone, welcome back to Board Games Unlocked, and Brad and I are continuing our top 100 games of all time. We are now into the first segment of the top 50. Uh, and yeah, I'm not going to make the joke. I'm not going to do it. I will. I, I, I will. Yeah. The, the, these are the actual 50 best games. The other ones were just shit, you know. <laughs> where, where, this is the true list. I've never even played the other ones. Yeah. <laughs> like, I just looked up 50 <laughs> random games. Uh, <laughs> all right. Well, this segment, I have one, two, three, four, five, six that rose, three that fell, and one new one. Yeah. Mine's the exact opposite. I had six <laughs> that fell, three that rose, and one new one. Uh, so what was that you were saying about these being actually good games? Well, they are. It was what we're going to find out is when we start getting these next ones. There's going to be a lot of rising. You know, That's like good. I had a lot. I had a lot that started climbing this year. Stuff yeah. I actually started getting played. So we'll yeah, start. and also like if they fell, they most likely. I mean, they fell from in the top 50 you know so the the falling is starts to become negligible because there's it doesn't have that much further left to fall uh occasionally we do get the ones like we've seen of like yeah this was my number two and now it's 95 it's like oh my god right um but let's kick this off with number 50 straight in the middle uh which was 39 last year and it was 60 in 2021 uh, and it fell mainly just because I haven't played it, even though I've been trying to actually get it played. I think this was already on your list, but way, way later. And that is Feast oh, yeah. for Odin. Uh, this is my personal favorite Uwe Rosenberg game, but granted, I haven't played a bunch of his. Um, the most recent one I've played is Holler Tau, uh, which is not bad. I uh, wouldn't make my top 100, but it uh, it wasn't bad. This was my 79. 79. Yeah. yeah. And I think mainly fell for you because it also hadn't been been played. Right. Uh but yeah, Feast for Odin is a giant. I mean, it has to be his most complex. I don't know what caused him to make this game. Um I think you had a bet. I think there I think there was he got drunk one night with some friends. <laughs> they bet him to, you know, because he's built upon uh Agricola and right. uh, Caverna. And they're like, I bet you can't build a fucking game with more than 50 action spots. I dare you. <laughs> He's like, you go. <laughs> uh, money on the table. But yeah, like <laughs> most of his other games, they are <laughs> polyomino style uh, with, yeah, with 60 something different worker placement spaces. And they are different. Again, they are still in categories. Uh, so the difference is that, oh, you go here, you get one resource, you go here, you get two. Like it's, that's kind of the idea is that they're grouped into segments of different actions like fishing or hunting or building or whatever it might be. But yeah, I mean, you're, you have your own player board where you are placing these polyomino pieces, uh, to get rid of negative points. You basically start in the hole and you will eventually expand out into these different islands uh, to try and get even more points. If you've, you know, built so well in your main hub, you've got to expand out. And there's a set collection element. There's cards involved. It's it's a heavy game, but I guarantee that the Sigma of this game is not as bad. So if that's what you're going off of, it's kind of like TI when people just kind of like hype up those games and then you play it and you're like, okay, it's not actually that bad, uh, you know, player dependent. Like if you only play, you know, I don't know, go fish and Uno. Yeah. <laughs> but if you're in this hobby, I, I really think if you've played the work replacement game before or even his other games, this one is definitely worth checking out. And I'm one of the lucky ones with the expansions because I'm sexy like that. Um, that one, yeah. but I haven't even tried it. I have not tried the Norwegian expansion. <laughs> so yeah, my number 50, A Feast for Odin. Yes, yes, good choice. My my number 50 is one. It was 43 last year. 
And it's one of those games that it jumped really high last year for me um, because I had learned the game last year. It was kind of my first year of, of playing it. And it is has a lot of hotness behind it. It made a really grand jump on BGG over the last couple of years. Um, and it's one that I want to play more um, because I haven't played it in a while. But it's it's one you need to play to kind of remember everything. Because I'm going to have to relearn this game when I get to it. But that's Brass Birmingham. Um, what do you mean it made a jump? It, it made a jump because of shitty review bombing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So this one, this is... <laughs> yeah. This is a really yeah. good one. I like this one it quite is good. a bit. Um, it, it definitely looks a lot better than its predecessor. Um, the predecessor, it was really boring looking and stuff. They came back with this, tweaked it a little bit, added some stuff. Then they came out with a second version. They're not the same game, but they're like, there's Lancashire and Birmingham. This is the one I prefer of the two. I've only played uh, Lancashire once and didn't care for it as much. But in this one, this one, you're, uh, it's just kind of like Martin Wallace's. I, I, I may be fibbing when I say, I think this is my favorite Martin Wallace. I believe that this is the highest rank one of his. But um, what I like about it is there's a, it's, it's got the cool railroad building phase. Like, like, I guess the game's split in a half. The first half you're doing canals. Mm -hmm. The second half you're doing railways. So if you, it's almost like it feels like a really pumped up version of Ticket to Ride there for a while. When you, It looks like it. I'm not going to say it feels like it. It looks like a Ticket to Ride, like when you get going with all the train building and stuff. But there's no, a lot going like on. This is like Deluxe because yeah. it has the railroad or the, the trains. Right, right. And I wish I had the Iron Clays. I keep trying to, I want to buy the Iron Clays for it um, to have, but they're expensive as hell. Um, but you know what, so pretty much you're, you are, like I said, you're, you're, you're running through the canal phase at the beginning, you're scoring that you're, you're going to be doing railway stuff and scoring, you're going to be, um, uh, any of your, uh, your industry, your tiles to build will score stuff like that. But when you have each round, you're just going to take two actions around. Um, and I don't know if you had this, um, it's, it's, Fairly cutthroat, I felt. Um, uh, yeah. When you're running a yeah, full player it's a, account. It's not, from what I've heard, it's like there's another game called Barrage, which I don't know yes. if you've played. I, um, I've watched playthrough. I haven't had a chance to play it yet. Yeah. Uh, so Barrage is apparently extremely mean. This one is, is still mean, mm -hmm. but you're at least rewarded for it. So, like, if people start using your resources, at least it flips your buildings. But from my personal play taste, it's like, well, I built that because I wanted the resources. I didn't build it so you could use them, which is obviously a strategy you can do is build them for other people to flip. So you mm -hmm. get the points of the buildings and the connections. But right. uh, yeah, like I I don't see the hype on this one. I, I think the game is good, uh, but it's not number one or number. It's not it's not top five worthy I, as much as i like it i mean there's other mm -hmm. games that should be in that and that's the and we could do a whole two hour freaking video about bgg and their ranking that is very but, true but i could um, have sworn i saw was this getting an expansion i haven't or... heard of anything but it wouldn't surprise me with i thought i saw i remember seeing something about it but um the one thing i wanted to point out if if you haven't played this and you have played the original brass um they added a new action uh in this one because i had played the old original one and didn't care for it a whole lot just because it looked boring and it just it mm -hmm. didn't look good but they added a i once well, it's called scouting i think or scout action and it's the one that lets you discard those cards and then you get to take a wild location and yeah, wild, wild location card. or a wild resource yeah right and and that replaced because in the original there was a double action build that you did and this replaced it so like it's to me i like this way better because you would you know it, it br brought in that randomness you know it's it's the whole mm -hmm. you know 
all that. It, 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 this one's just a better version, obviously. I mean, yeah. I like the and, fact that you like you're allowed to take loans. Like yes. you can, if you ever just need money, you can just do that. Uh, and the the game is is it's it's an odd one. Like I definitely see the um like the strategy that is is involved in this game. I'm just I'm just mind boggled that it flew the number one, but it's also tainted at number one because of the reason why it is. Like it's, okay, so it was like, the same like, reason why I threw a fit how Gloomhaven went to number one so fast. That wasn't you know. that was just through hype though, not through well, less review bomb. But it's we just don't, we don't that's... like it. That's just the 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 bad the downside of that system that whole BGG sure. system. I mean, that's I don't ever look at that crap anymore just because it's a popularity contest over. I know it always cracks me up that when people are selling games and they'll bring up the BGG rating yeah. and it's like oh <laughs> ooh <laughs> like <laughs> yeah that doesn't matter. So anyway, that's my number fifty, Brass Birmingham. We'll see where it goes next year. All right, my number. 49 rose uh quite a bit and this is actually kind of funny because we were just talking about this game it was number 100 last year and i'm guessing that this was because it was number 100 either because it was new to the list for sure uh but maybe i hadn't played all the expansions so my number 49 is Endless go. Winter, <laughs> Paleo <laughs> Americans. And what's funny is at this time, Brad was asking me if the base game was worth it. And I was like, no, <laughs> not really. Not picking up just the base game. Um, because the reason why this is so high up is I think the base game is good. Like, I, I'd give it like, I think I gave it a 7 out of 10 because that's all I had played whenever we did the, um, whenever I initially did the run through. However, the uh, the expansions that this game has are all extremely modular that you can just pick and choose from the variety that they have. And they did a really smart thing, Fantasia did, where like it's it's like a um, game trays, but all the expansion content is organized elsewhere. Uh, so you have all the base game stuff together and then all the expansion stuff. And because the game is a deck builder and an area control thing and a tracks thing, uh, and the deck building isn't kind of that exciting. You have like four different types of tribes. You have different technologies that you can get. But they all just give you kind of resources to go and build your tents in that hex based grid or build your huts to just kind of get resources. And all that is well and good, but the expansions for this add just extra decks that you can throw in, uh, different type tribesmen, uh, different animals that you do a set collection for, different tiles that you added, tribe special powers, uh, and all that you can just kind of pick and choose what you want. And the base game does have some uh, uh, variants you can throw in that I would highly recommend. Um, that kind of give the tile area control thing a little bit more life. Um, the one thing that they didn't really touch, there are two tracks that you go up, and it's pretty easy to max out on both of them. And after that, it's just kind of like whatever. But yeah, this game is extremely solid. Like I think all the expansions are great. The most gimmicky one is the cave painting one where you have your own board, uh, like your dry erase board, and you're connecting paths to get, you know, s you know, uh, special events or uh, special resources. And that's just gimmicky. It's it's probably my least favorite of the whole expansions, like the bigger box expansions, but still worth getting just because it's pretty thematic. I thought it was still fun. But yeah, this one is extremely, I mean, high because it came up from 100 I can see this uh, sticking around this time, though, because after you play it, it just kind of makes sense. This is a really good design. So, yeah, it's it's a solid one. So I recommend it. That's my 49 Endless Winter. 
I need to pick your brain sometime later about which expansions to pick up. I have a video on every single one of them. Okay. Go watch my content. <laughs> I only watch the ones I'm on. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm that egocentric. <laughs> All right. So anyway, my number 49 is a game that you have played with me. I showed it to you. Um, you did not care for it that much. Um, but it was 74 last year for me, so it did jump up. And it mainly jumped up because um, I've gotten a lot of the other expansion stuff and versions to kind of tie in with it. So I'm kind of throwing it all under one umbrella because some of these are like, aren't really expansions. They're kind of like, you know, a game inside itself. But I'm kind of putting them all under the undaunted mm. um, umbrella. Um, Undaunted Normandy, North Africa, the reinforcements, those were the main ones that were together. And then there was the Battle for Britain, which brought in air airfare. And that was kind of a standalone game in itself. Could kind of be mixed, you know, it's like, but this system, I like deck building. I like, I always liked Memoir 44 back in the day. This one, I like better than Memoir 44 because you have a little more control in things. Um, and pretty much you, when you pick your scenario, it's going to tell you all the little decks of cards, the units that you're going to use for each side, the access to the allies, and you're going to lay them out. And then you're going to have your starting hand and you're going to have different command points and different stuff that you can purchase recruit cards from those decks and put into your, into your deck to self shuffle them in and then whatever the objective is that you are uh you when you play it when you uh, you're gonna have units out on the table uh, and you're gonna move those around by use by playing cards and they have different the cards are multi-use the cards can be used to whatever scout or move or attack or you know recruit more people there's just different different keywords that you could use all the while, what you're trying to do most of the time is you're trying to control points. Um, you're trying to escape without all your people dying. There's there's a bunch of different scenarios. And Naunted Normandy in its, uh, itself was okay. I mean, we had a we we played a couple of games. There was that one scenario; it was just dumb. Um, and then <laughs> there the was one a where you had to run, where I just he pretty much run called ass. Me. Yeah, like, <laughs> but okay, I'd like to shoot my mortar. <laughs> right. Roll miss um the, what i what i like about it though is this one dealt with units north africa brought in it, it's more of a bigger scale so you're gonna have like your tanks your your you know vehicles and stuff reinforcements was the key though to unlocking this whole system because not only was it a box that held everything um it brought in solo for everything um so every everything that was out currently it gave solo scenarios and everything with it you could solo the other things but this this really gave you scenario books and every all that stuff so that really made it um something that i could put down the table and play and it was fun you know it gave me that memoir 44 with it where i could play it by myself and then the battle for Britain, I haven't messed with as much, but I like the airfare with that one, the whole air battle and stuff. It feels different. Um, yeah. I'm, what I'm excited for is I can never remember the name of it. It's the uh, futuristic Undaunted. Um, oh, yeah. That's going to come like out with Undaunted like the Undaunted 2077. Yeah, something like that. Callisto Protocol. Yeah, yeah. I think, I think uh, Dead close. Space. Like, just whatever. But, 2022 Callisto. Wow. I was joking. Yeah, I know you got yeah, you're right <laughs> when I this. said Callisto because Callisto Protocol was that game made by the Dead Space designers yeah. that flopped super hard. I was just, but yeah, that's the one. <laughs> but this one, that one's going to be really neat too to get out of the World War II era and just to see what they kind of cool stuff they can do with the futuristic stuff. It it's one that I'll pick up just because I like the system. Mm -hmm. uh, it's I'll be interested to see what they do with it. I trust the yeah, designers, it's, you know, and because I think, um. So I was looking at Osprey Games yesterday because I think 
uh, Imperium Horizons. Yeah, is... it's February 21st is the release date. Okay. It's that one's 80 fucking bucks. I know, but there's a shit ton in there. It's but it's cards. <laughs> I know. I know. But if you look at the other games, they were 40. I know they're six. I was trying to see if Undaunted so... was was available for pre-order on their website because I oh. would imagine it's going to be you would think just would as be, much. But... Uh, sure. but yeah, it's I was like, man, that's that's kind of that's rough. It is, but I'm gonna buy it because I like the game and oh, I am too. It's, and it's gonna be a, you know, Osprey's turned into one of those companies. I look at, I really look at their stuff hard whenever they come out with something. I don't buy everything, obviously, but like, yeah, they they had a pretty good run there for, stretch for a few years that makes me kind of keep looking at them. Yeah, but I so. really want to try this solo. I mm-hmm. think that might help with the. I mean, the randomness could still be extremely frustrating, but at least it's not against another person. Well, well, but that's another thing that that reinforcements actually brings in the cooperative. So, like you and I could both oh, okay. actually control the allies and run through and work together. Okay, cool. So, I mean, that would be kind of something to try because you and I could strategize together and and yeah. try to do stuff. That might be okay. even funner than you know, but the head to head where it's yeah. like, yay, I keep missing. Yeah, exactly. It's nice. less threatening because I mean, when you're working together, it's like at least you have a cheerleader. <laughs> <laughs> That's know? true. Yeah, you share in the disappointment. Right. right. All right. So, well, I'd say good pick, but I don't really like this game right now. But gonna, I'm willing to give it another shot. You're not going to like my next pick either, but we'll. We'll, <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't think you've played my number forty-eight. Uh, this one fell. It was thirty-two last year, so. Uh, and it was 24 the year before, but it's slowly been slipping. But funny enough, even though it's been falling, it stayed in the top 50. And I guarantee you this one will go up because it just released an expansion, which blew my mind. Not the expansion because I haven't played it yet, but the fact that it released one because uh, I thought they were done with this. And this is the best version of this game that I think covers this IP like at all and that is war oh, yeah, of the ring that. yeah you were we were supposed to play this That's yeah i know but then you know we got other games to play I I mean, <laughs> we are very limited on games that we we can play like so there's not many that come out yeah um <laughs> yeah this one like i know i say it almost every single time but when people are talking about star wars rebellion as star wars is in a box this is that but lord of the rings uh, but for me, this one, I think it's just leagues better because mm-hmm. it kind of is a it's, it's a what if scenario because you just have so many different avenues not to win, but in in how you want to utilize your um, like your armies. And because like there's two ways that both sides win, both sides share a. Uh, war victory take over enough strongholds get enough points that way and you win but the other way that's more asymmetric is that the shadow player is trying to corrupt uh the the company and frodo and them are trying to get to mount doom and drop the ring off so there's kind of like a hidden movement element incorporated in this massive battle that you're fighting at various locations with different types of of enemies um this also implores or employs um, d- uh, dual-sided cards that are good for like battle or good for outside the battle that you want to keep that you can only use one like the top half or the bottom half. Um, I know a lot of people don't like the fact that you have to like get them to war because it's like oh we just ha- we just want to fight. I personally like the war track. I think that gives different members of your company agency because if you want their power like let's say you want Gimli to be the lead in your company because you like his ability but you could use the dwarves to get them well there's a couple ways like one if the dwarves get attacked then yeah they're they're now at war but you can start getting them prepped if you send like Gimli to any of the dwarven strongholds and have him rally them and but and if you're thinking oh well he never left like he never did that it's like yeah but what if he did <laughs> what if the dwarves came to fight uh like if he went to Erebor or if he went to wherever 
to get the dwarves to participate in this in this fight. It is just such a good game. This is also a dice action game where you roll dice that you have and that determines the actions that you can take. I much prefer that than the alternative of doing actions and rolling dice to see if you succeed, okay. even though that is how combat is kind of resolved anyway. Um, which, funny enough, has never bothered me. But the latest expansion that they added or that they brought up Kings of Middle Earth, which has been in limbo forever, finally came out. Oh, and what does it add? Lord Sauron tried to bend the will of the kings and the rulers of the free peoples with subtle machinations. Um, role of the rulers of the free peoples and their weaknesses is the focus of Kings of Middle Earth, the third expansion for War of the Ring. The part they play in the story is greatly expanded with new figures and rules that bring to life Theoden, Denethor, Dane, Bran. Oh, Dane, okay. Brand and Thranduil, additional characters to expand. The Shadow Armies, the Dark Chieftains are also included. Yeah, because each expansion is basically what was once a card is now a character, like Elrond and Galadriel, mm -hmm. or the Ents. Like in one of the expansion before this newest one was like actual Ents and the Eagles and the Ghost Army. And then the shadow people had the spiders. I think it was like the it's it's the the skanky raiders because I just watched Two Towers, but I cannot remember their name. The we will fight for <laughs> Saruman, that guy. <laughs> the dude, brush your fucking teeth, man. Um, and what was the third one? Oh, the boats. The people in the Return of the King uh, that have the ships. Um, so yeah, there's just so much in this game. It's a wonderful head to head set in Lord of the Rings and it's not in my top 100, but I'm going to mention it here. There's a previous game you can play called hunt for the ring, which is a hidden movement game of getting Frodo to Rivendell. There's two parts to that game. First part is getting debris. And then the second part is getting to Rivendell. Very awesome hidden movement game. Very thematic as well. But what's cool about that is, depending on how that game ends, you have rules for how War of the Ring starts. Because you the free, uh, or the, I can't wait, like, the company starts in Rivendell in this game. So, yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty badass. Um, just so much what if scenarios. It's, it's amazing. So, so I have a quick question for you. Um, do you What's like a... the theme of Dune? Uh, no, I actually don't. <laughs> the only reason I was asking is because that the new Simon Kickstarter is being delivered now. That Dune War of Arrakis, mm -hmm. and it is actually made by the same guys that did Battle of Five Armies in this. Oh, okay. And um, apparently it pulls from both of those games. Um, and it plays has, and it's not identical, obviously, but it it has a lot of War of the Ring elements in it. And Battle of Five gotcha. and it and stuff. I I was just bringing it up because if you did, that would be one to check out because yeah, it's it's getting pretty good reviews from a lot of the people I listen to. Yeah. So yeah, with Dune, um, I've never read the books. I Not watched either. the the remake, like the first movie that with Timothy Chalamet and all them, um, and I was like. What the fuck is going on? <laughs> All the good like, stuff's happening in the second movie from the looks yeah, of Yeah, <laughs> that's what I've heard. And I've also heard that, yeah, some of like the books, you, like there's like, okay, here's the ones you should read. But if you really hate yourself or you want to have like a coke addled mind, uh, read these books as well. Right. Um, so, yeah, not not an IP I'm really interested in. Okay. Um, I just figured I'd bring it up because I knew that the, the same designers did it and stuff. And right everything so okay cool but yeah that's my number 48 war of the ring all right my number 48 is another game i showed to you and you didn't care for um it was 75 last year so it it and undaunted were right next to each other last year too they just kind of flipped spots and moved up um and they both actually take place in the same same time period of history and that is oh Hyper elite the board game this one like, what, I'm like, what other <laughs> war game did you show me yeah and 
like so I don't remember what I gave this. I mean I can I can look it I up because my either. HD rankings are pretty accurate. <clears throat> um hmm, hmm, hmm. I'll bump it up. <laughs> I'm like it was at a four. I'm like, eh, that's probably a little little too low. I'll bump it up to a five. Well um, and the thing is with this game is and, and you know, and, and this was something that got brought up in our uh, discussion about it was you've played a lot of hidden movement games, mm -hmm. you know, and stuff over the years. This is one of my early ones, you know, like I hadn't played a whole lot. Yeah. I, I'm a huge fan of the video game. I, you know, this came out, I got it. It, so it, it hit that itch of the mm. hidden movement control, you know, playing the video game kind of stuff. And to me, it's it's my favorite one I've played. Now I know that my my uh, pool of hidden movement games is thin. I mean, if you like it, you like it. You don't have to have like have like five other hidden movement. I know, I think but that's you actually know, like, my problem is I right. have those hidden movement games that I'm like, right. I mean, yeah, like even I one that I did like recently, Beast. I was like, okay, I mean, yeah, it's good, but it's hidden movement, right? Like, right. Okay, how else can you make that exciting? So pretty much on this one, um, there's different maps that come in the game, and we 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 only played I think the base game ones, but there's the mm -hmm. Eagle's Nest expansion that had add more maps to it and stuff too, and uh, it doesn't show it here, but the sniper person actually has a smaller whiteboard version of the the board game or the board game board map, mm -hmm. and they're marking on there where they're moving. And then if they either shoot or get discovered or whatever, then they put their mini where they're at and they have to either escape, get hidden, you know, kill whoever's around there or whatever. Um, there is that. There's a different objectives. And the way the objectives get picked is kind of cool, too, because you draw. They look like playing cards, like down there at the bottom left. You can't have two of the same suit. So they, they that's how they get you to go to two different parts of the map. So you choose the different suits. That tells you the two things you need to do to win. Um, and then you are, you have, you have a timer, you're trying, you have a certain amount of time to get those, get those objectives done. Whenever you shoot or do anything, you're pulling out of that bag. Um, so there's different chips, weighted chips in there. There's noise chips, there's hit chips, there's uh, misfire chips. There, there's different stuff in there. As the more you kill people, the more hit chips you get in there. So that means just more confident of a shooter you are, you know, and stuff. Um, the bad guy, which to me, I played this at four, um, one time where I was the sniper and the other ones were just, cause there's different colors of regiment of Nazis. Um, I think it's funner at two. Um, yeah, I was looking up if people are saying it's what it's best at and people are yeah, saying what best they at say? two or yeah. two or four. Yeah. Cause I mean, cause it makes sense because it, to me, when I played it as the Nazis, that gave me more control over the whole board. Um, yeah. And stuff. Uh, when there's more than that, then you only control your yellows and the other ones control their reds, you know, so there's different stuff. Mm -hmm. And they each have a captain in that color that has a special abilities that they can use. There's different abilities and I'm not going to go into all that, but pretty much it's you got your normal hidden movement stuff and you're just playing cat and mouse and trying to do objectives just like a normal hidden movement game. I just like, I think the theme and having the extra chip pulls as the attack and just different stuff like that. Yeah. Picking up items. You can use the items that can modify maybe like throw a rock over here to make a sound over there to get them to get, you know, there's, there's a bunch of different cool things I like about it. And, and mm -hmm. um, I, I get the feeling of the game from playing this um, because I, love those kind of games where you have to sneak around and be stealthy and not make any noise and stuff um instead of just running and gunning so this just kind of fits my wheelhouse as far as that kind of stuff goes and i kind of hope they come out with more um i really haven't looked at it much this board game company they they make board game versions of video games um so I'm kind of hoping that they maybe throw some more content this way because it did get pretty good, pretty good buzz when you know when it came out and it got good reviews and stuff. Yeah, I was so, trying to find out what else they made, but I cannot. They do. All um, I see is Joyride, which is coming out. 
yeah, and like Judge Dredd. Was yeah, a, you know, and then Block Mania. I thought yeah. I could have sworn they did something else, but I guess well, because well, because the video game, um, Sniper Elite is from Rebellion. That that's okay. their that's the video game. So then they they have a board game version of their video game company called Unplugged. So that's Got where it. you get Rebellion Unplugged. It almost it almost kind of fits like uh, Mechs and Minions, you know, when they had that the video game. Oh and they turned, yeah, you know. So I don't know how they made the it, best produce game and then never yeah, did anything with it. Exactly. So I'm I'm kind of hoping they put more out. If they don't, there's still plenty of content. There should that, be. That I mean, there's, a, there's stuff. five games, right? Five uh, sniper yes. Games. They have tons of maps. They could do a campaign. Yeah. On this, they like, like a scenario based campaign where both sides have objectives to complete. Well, um, yeah, I mean, they, they have maps. ways to. I mean, that's I yeah. would be happy just throw new maps, they don't even have to add. I mean, it would be nice, they're going to add more abilities and stuff like that, but just put more maps. I mean, that's really yeah, all this what is it with co- like companies just don't want to do map packs, <laughs> right? Like, it's weird. I like they feel like they have to add something. It's like, no, you, your system's good, like, mm-hmm. just. Do a map pack of like five double sided boards, yep. and then boom, ten maps there. You're done. You raked yeah. in money. You made money. <laughs> yeah, um, um, so we'll see how it goes. But yeah, this one, this one <laughs> just kind of like it, it. It's like you mentioned. It's in a genre that I have the games that I like, and it's not this game's fault necessarily. I mean, there are elements of this game I don't like, but I uh, can't say it's not thematic. But yeah, it's like any hidden movement game coming out nowadays. It's like you either have to just wow me or but it's like, well, I have these other games that I like. It's a saturated uh, genre. Yeah. And yeah. if it's not, then it's like, well, you did too much. Right. Um. So, yeah, it, it's a weird one. Um. Anyway, yep. going into a completely completely opposite direction like there's not gonna be a single game that's like this one on either of our lists and apparently last year this rose last year it was 194 damn so <clears throat> it's 47 now <laughs> uh i don't know how it was that low and i so whatever but um, this is one of the purest logic games that I have, and it, it uh, the fa- I think the fact that a rose is high is a testament to just the fact that this game works, um, just by sheer design is amazing, and that is Turing Machine. Okay. So Turing Machine again, also by Scorpion Mask, and they're a publishing Sky company team. that what Sky Team. Yeah, that did Sky Team, that did Decrypto. Um, I just played a party game by them called Stay Cool. Scorpion Mask is a publishing company that I need to just keep an eye out because I have loved every game of theirs that I have played. And Turing Machine is no different. I got this on a whim at Gen Con because I was picking up something else at their booth. And the guy behind me was like, oh, you picking up Turing Machine? I'm like, I have no idea what that is. Don't talk to me, weirdo. No, I'm <laughs> uh, and he's like, oh, it's a logic game, like kind of like based off the Turing test. It's just, yeah, so, if, I mean, it looks good. I'm like, okay, yeah, I'll, I'll pick it up because it looks like nothing. Um, that's it. That's everything in the box. Uh, except, well, there's hundreds of those um, checkmark cards. I have the checkmarks with the TM and the A through F. Um but yeah, this is a 100% pure logic game where you are trying to answer questions to get a three-digit code faster than everyone at the table. Uh, you have three colors, blue, orange, and purple. And you have symbols, triangle, square, and circle. And all of those questions revolve around those. And there's uh, a bunch of scenarios in the box that are... Uh, like they They say is more luck based to strategy and they vary. So it's like the easier ones are more luck based uh, and the harder ones are more strategy based. I don't really know what that means. The only thing that I can think of is that the luck is like that. You can just kind of stumble into the right answer. 
versus a strategy you can't i i don't know but you what you're doing is on your turn you are picking a sequence of those numbers from one to five that you could pick three two one you know three blue two orange one purple and you take those cards and you put them like together i had my hands too low you put them together and then you grab one of those questions and you're trying to find out like i wish i could kind of read it but it's not in english <laughs> um <laughs> and let's say that one of the questions is square is equal to or greater than four um well since you pick two as your square and you ask that question all you do is you put those cards that you picked and you put it in front of that question uh mark box and if it's a red x that means square is not uh, equal to or greater than four, which is good because you picked a two. Now you need to figure out whether square is three, two, or one. So you just ask these types of questions, trying to get the most uh, information, and that's the game. So if you don't like pure logic, which is exactly this, then this is absolutely not for for you. Um, if you, but if you do, then I highly recommend this, uh, cause there are just, I mean, cause they also have a website like that will procedurally generate the scenarios. Um, I want to see if I can find the website. Um, it, it, made yeah. me think, it make me think too much. I, I don't know. Yeah. Because all, yeah, so all you do is you just hit play and then you can pick a mode. Whether you like, you, I guess that has a co op mode, but if you do competitive, you can do extreme, classic extreme or nightmare mode. Let's do hard with six verifiers and then you generate it. And then it tells you what, I mean, you can barely see it, but the, it tells you what cards to grab. Um, and also gives you a code so other people can hop in and check their solution but yeah it's it's a brilliant brilliant design um so yeah i don't want to play this all the time because i don't want to sit there and think like purely think and i know i've played this for people who loved it when and got their own copy and i've played this with people who hated it so it's kind of that polarizing how does your brain work do you want to think that much um but i i i sometimes do and whenever i do i'm like oh yeah yeah. So, yeah. I mean, I'm a teacher. I don't need to use my brain any more than I <laughs> I barely use it when I'm working. <laughs> Usually I'm just trying to play a movie so I can nurse this hangover. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So my number 47, you talked about last list, maybe a couple of lists ago, something like that. It was 35 last year, and I think this is probably where it's going to settle in at um, after just kind of comparing it with stuff. Um, I I would be surprised if they come out with any more for this game. I think they've unofficially said that the game is pretty much done with expansions and stuff now. The last expansion that came out was the one that we had been asking for um, as as people that like this game and that is oh vindication yeah. um the chronicles expansion i mean that was kind of the cherry on top for the game um it brought a little more story into it which is what it needed um mm -hmm. the game itself is still really good it's just it was just more or less just cube movement and popping around and doing different stuff until you got the story though um this also has tons of different modules that you can play with which is the best kinds of expansions that we've also talked about um whether yeah. you want to throw pets in or you want to throw you know whatever the hell in all, all different kinds of stuff um i think like i said i i don't i would be surprised if they come out with any more for this game um they had the big box with this last part um it's pretty well filled I almost would be yeah. ticked off if they came out with more <laughs> because they <laughs> quite fit in the big box. Yeah. Um, and they've started going other directions with stuff. Um, yeah, I think their their focus is going to be spirit fire. Yeah. yeah. So 
Um, pretty much, this game looks interesting. I like it looks unique, um, okay. but the theme of it is you just you're just a piece of shit. You get marooned off of a ship onto a planet, and you're just trying to redeem yourself. Uh, so it's a competitive game. You're moving through. Um, the tiles come out as you're exploring and your characters actually move in the triangles between them. And then when you move there, you get to actually choose one of the ones around you to activate as long as nobody else is there. And you can do all kinds of different stuff. There's this, the whole manipulation of your own player board where you have potential energy. Oh gosh, I can't remember the name of them. There was, there was their, your basic stuff. There was potential. And then there was whatever the far right one was. I can't think of it. Anyway, um, and you're you're move, you're doing different things to move these cubes around so that you can do more actions to get stuff. And then when you're trying to get cubes of different colors, so that you can do get stuff from different uh, places from around the board when you visit those tiles, could be people that join your party. It could be pets if you're doing pets. It could be m monsters that you're trying to kill. You know, just different items. It can be all kinds of stuff. Um, but uh, the storytelling aspect that popped in with the with the Chronicles deal just made it that much better. And and yeah. I would be just I'll be thrilled if they don't come out with anything else. And this is what we have. We have the complete thing. Um, and like I said, it'll it's probably always going to be my top 100 because it's just a really, really solid, fun game. I don't win it very often when I do play it, but I still have fun just doing stuff, you know, yeah, always gaining stuff. Um, and, uh, oh yeah. And the, that was the other thing. And other games do this too, but this one was one of my first ones that I'd really encountered with this was the in game stuff. Like you start out with a certain deal and then as every time somebody passes a marker, then a mm -hmm. new, a, a new game end condition pops out. Um, so the game could end immediately, almost immediately if it gets, you know, if the right thing pops open and you've done stuff. I mean, it yeah. so. Um, so yeah, I mean, this, this one is, is a great one. This one a long time ago when it first came out was a top 10 game for me way back. One of our first lists, like six, seven years ago was, this was a top 10. Um, and it's kind of just hung around in this area and this is probably where it'll most likely stay at. Yeah. Yeah. Orange Nebula definitely has a way they don't make a lot of games, but they make extremely unique games. And this is certainly one of them. And they support their games, too, which is awesome. Right. It's like, I'd much rather have quantity over quality. Right. Uh, so, yeah, great game. Great, great game. My number 46. Uh, I don't know if you've played yet. I think you own it. But I don't know if you've played it yet. And this one rose. It was 83 last year. So, apparently, this is the year of rising super high. Uh, this is a theme that I know very little about. In fact, most of my knowledge is coming from playing this game and having to look stuff up. Uh, it's a theme that I remember talking about that you could not have cared less, but I think me talking it up so much eventually got you to pick it up. And it is a dry, dry Euro, but it has so much uh, great gameplay to it, and that is Carnegie. Oh, I have it. I have not played it yet. Okay. I, I knew, I feel like I remember you buying it. Yeah. So it's Amy, just Amy picked it out. It <laughs> uh, yeah. So based off the life of Andrew Carnegie, which was apparently like a entrepreneur kind of guy that made a shit ton of money and kind of gave it all away towards the end of his life, um, is my very simplistic understanding of, of Andrew Carnegie. Um, it actually says on the BGG, which is nice. Sorry, his career as a telegraphist, his role as one of the major players in the rise of the United States steel industry made him one of the richest men in the world and an icon of the American dream. Hell yeah. A philanthropist died in 1919 with more than 350 million wealth, was bequeathed to various foundations. And that's really what you're doing. This entire game is a is a kind of a worker placement esque. Uh, where you are eventually building buildings in your own kind of little building board. Uh, but what's also kind of unique is that you have these movement 
uh elements like when you do an action you actually kind of have to move your meeples around your board like as an, an actual office building to get certain meeples on actions to get a stronger effect from them um and you're also sending workers out to these different sections of the board to kind of vie for area control to move your track up to get benefits of whether or not you want really large end game uh conditions where like all the different tracks are kind of like the railroad placements where it's like hey i got all the way to the green on every single one of these that's going to be a massive multiplier but the crux of this game is you will eventually be placing discs in various foundation sections, which are again end game victory points. Everything is everything that you're doing in the game is really to build up to end game victory points, which I personally love. Like when I'm playing games, that's usually my goal is knowing what scores at the end of the game and aiming for end game victory points because that typically is the larger amount of points. So sometimes throughout games, I'll either be trailing behind, but I'm mentally thinking like, okay, I think I still will get this uh, based off endgame. I'm just hoping everyone else forgot <laughs> what endgame scoring is. Um, or sometimes I'll get a huge lead in the game. Like I'll I'll be like, oh, boom, my strategy went off. And then like I'll slowly, I'm like, oh, well, ran out of ideas. And people will slowly start catching up. But this game... Uh, I've never played a game where you score so little in during the game, but then at the end, you get like hundreds of points, not hundreds, because it's not that kind of game. Dozens. But I think, I, yeah, you get thousands of points. <laughs> um, God, that would be stupid. <laughs> like, they just inflate the number for no reason. Um, <laughs> it's like, okay, so... It's like whenever, like, Yu-Gi-Oh! It does, like, 2,000 damage and magic is, like, 2, because it's the same thing. Uh, but, yeah, like, you'll have, like, 8 points by the end of the, the game, and then it's like, alright, time to do end game scoring, and then you'll have, like, 94. It's like, where did all those points come from? It's like, well, all the buildings you built, all that, all the foundations you donated to, it's, it's a really awesome thematic kind of tie-in, where it's like, yeah, I mean, yeah, he was, you know beneficial during his life but people remember him as what he did at the end so it's just kind of a cool little system they threw in but what's also neat it's not oh. actually on the board but the way actions are selected oh look at that hey, Yoda. <laughs> i'm like which one is that one i can't yeah, remember yeah, yeah, yoda uh, <laughs> so oh, cute out of here <laughs> um <laughs> But yeah, the way the actions are depicted is there are these uh, four different rows of like four actions and you just shuffle those up, flip them and move them around and you kind of just go from left to right. So you know how many actions of a certain thing are going to be taken, you know when they're going to happen. So you're planning for that. You're planning to take certain actions because it's kind of a, hey, I get to do this. My opponents also get to do it. So you kind of choose an action to take that your opponent might not get the biggest benefit from. Um yeah, it's it's awesome. It looks, I mean, because you're also building railroads. That's what the blue tracks are of connecting San Francisco to Denver because you want to connect certain, a certain number of cities. There's like a lot going on, but not a lot at the same time. It's just an extremely, extremely solid design that I kind of expected me to be like, eh, all right. Yeah, it's a dry Euro about Andrew Carnegie. And I played it and I was like, this is fucking fantastic. This is so good. And the solo mode is really good too, although I can't quite remember how it how it works since I've only I've only done it the the one time. But yeah, it's uh it's really good. Carnegie. And there is an expansion. Yeah, but I, I have not tried oh. it. I think it just added more buildings. Like more more like different buildings. Uh, but I, ha I haven't given it a shot yet. So yeah, that's my number 46, Carnegie. Yeah, I'll get it played sometime soon. Like I said, Amy liked the looks of it, so we ended up picking it up, so we'll we'll get it played at some point. Yeah, and I'm trying to think who the publisher is. Quinn Games? Well, I don't know. I mean, they have what, a bunch of stuff, but that doesn't necessarily mean they helped publish it. What I was going to say is the designer of this, though, Oh, it's um, Trois. 
yeah, he did Twa and Black Angel, yep. you know, stuff like that. Carson so, City, I know a lot of people like. Um, yeah. So Twa is one that I was got into this year. Yes. Uh, more so, so that was that yeah. intrigues me more about this game because since I like his other one, you know. Yeah, that is true. You did, you did like Twa, and I like Black Angel. I just haven't played in forever. Right. No one I played it with liked it. It was like my feudum. Where I'm like, Have you, anyone, anyone want to play some feudum? And right. it's like, no, fine, I'll finally get rid of it. But Black Angel, <laughs> I still have. Yeah. Although I am seeing feudum go into GameFound, and I'm like, oh, I just, don't do it. just don't do it. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I'll just look at it and be like, <laughs> what could have been? Yeah. All right. So my number 46 actually was 18 last year. Ooh. So it fell off quite a bit. And wow. I was trying to figure out why. And I guess it's mainly because at this point in this game's lifespan, I only play it with you. Um when uh, whenever I'm special. Whenever, well, right. And I mean, because I it's so grandiose now. There's so much for it. Um I mean, I, I still back everything that it comes out with. That that doesn't stop me from backing it. But we went through several of the campaigns of it and played different versions of it and stuff. It doesn't mean it's any less of a great game. It's just I just don't play it as often as I used to because it's more of a you-me game now for uh, all intents and purposes. Yeah. And that is Aeon's End. Nice. Um, this was one you introduced to me, gosh, a long time ago back when Forever we started ago. playing. Um and uh and old john yeah. introduced this one to me right a yeah stand-up guy right there <laughs> yeah. well and you the very I, I the very first time you showed this game to me we were playing against this bad guy on the cover mm -hmm. and it came down to that one last card flip you know there was two cards left in the player order if it was the bad guy he was going to win if it was you we were going to win and it was us i mean it, the the edge of your seat part of that was what was cool unique deck building of this where you don't ever shuffle was is awesome um there's so much for this game now uh we've played through both the legacies um there's all these i still haven't played all of the other boxes that have the little journeys or yeah, whatever they call stuff. them which is uh, unfortunate because those are important to like the story i know <laughs> the overall but I, story it is but the, to be I like the story, but to be honest, the story is not the draw to this game for me. Yeah. The, the the draw to this game is just, I mean, it, it's a boss battler that you that you are you. in 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 deck building form. You know, I mean, you don't mm -hmm. need it. The story is good for the legacy stuff, but like, if you just threw down a boss and threw out stuff, the world is cool, but man, the characters are just so whatever. Yeah, <laughs> you know that's kind of. <laughs> And the first the first legacy game if you give the we found out that if you give us the freedom to name anything in the game it gets inappropriate really quick we're not going to go down that oh yeah road, but, <laughs> but, uh, the first legacy was pretty interesting. made the first legacy game fun <laughs> yeah uh the second one was pretty decent um there's so many nameless at this point um yeah and and heroes there's actually another damn kickstarter coming out here in a few weeks that i'm gonna yeah. back but i have I'm, so I much am too. i have and so much mainly because yeah mainly because i need to get apparently i missed the dividers for the past yeah. and future expansion so i mean if you have those i'll take them uh I but i'm hoping I, can... I didn't buy the dividers for that i have the dividers for all the rest of them but i don't for that set damn yeah, oh, yeah, so I'm hoping that's available. But yeah, I actually did watch their descent, like a playthrough of the descent, which is what yeah. the Aeon's End thing is called. And they add like a friend and foe element, which is like another kind of like person that can help you and then a foe for the enemy. Oh, okay. Um, so they're still finding yeah. ways to keep it fresh. Like, I don't <laughs> know how they do it. I just wish they would stop and then come out with a big <laughs> box or something just to just to be done with it. I thought they were done. I thought with yeah. uh, um, what was Astronites, I thought that they were going to focus on that and quit making Aeon's End stuff, but I guess well, I was wrong. Well, and the thing that got me thinking that they were going to continue a little bit, because when they retooled their team and added uh, Sidney Engelstein to it, 
because she's kind of different design. She brought they brought her in with the legacy of Gravehold. And so I was like, mm-hmm. oh, are they getting ready to start running stuff? And then I saw the Astronauts and I was like, oh, well, maybe Astronauts is going to be kind of the direction they go and stuff. God, that this they, is such a man. A, I forgot yeah. this is what this game looked like. Yeah, without the play mats, and that's the old school one in it. So yeah. So, but anyway, yeah, they this one's one. It, it's it's always going to be on my top one hundred. It's just one that, with all the crap I have here at the house, it's one of those that you and I pretty much just play them because playing this game solo is is doable, and you can play it solo, pure co op. But playing it with another second person. It's so mm-hmm. cool because we've had so many times where we've just bounced stuff and and the table talk goes really well with this kind of a boss battler. And yeah. And so we, if we go through a couple of those boxes over the next year, it could jump right back up, you know, it just depends on how it yep, goes. I agree. We'll definitely talk about this game later on because <laughs> I, I have played all the stuff. Yeah. So that's how I can kind of talk. At least I can, whenever I mention the story, I'm like, yeah it's it's not the best it's, right. it's not the best they they it almost feels like when they're writing and the writing is fine like i'm not like i'm not really trying to dig on it because it's, it's better than what i could do probably um but it's like they feel like they have to like prove something so they just keep talking <laughs> they keep re- like when you're because there's no narration or anything so it's like when you're reading it it's like are you fucking done? Like, get your point across and move on. Well, and if Ugh. you want, if you want to see some life brought into the story, just just go back and watch some of the videos of our of our playthroughs, and you get to hear Seth do all the voices of the characters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm I'm an aspiring <laughs> voice actor. Um, I'll lend my services to games that don't use Foreteller. Yeah. Uh, you know, yeah, fantastic choice. This game is amazing. <clears throat> All right, my number forty-five fell. It was number thirty-seven last year, and apparently was thirty-seven the year before, so it stayed in the same spot. Uh, it mainly fell just because I haven't touched it in a bit. I think they're kind of done with supporting it. Um, this is a Pandasaurus game, if I remember right. That is actually good. That's not a dinosaur game. And that <laughs> is oh, the yeah. loop. I haven't ever played Pandasaurus. This so the loop, uh, they made one expansion that kind of added more scenarios and a little bit more characters, and they did another small one, I think, that added cats and dogs. Uh, the loop. I'm trying to find the... There it is. Yeah, the Fur Brig- uh, Brigade uh, is added two brand new characters, I guess. Catramans, Forbidden Magical Knowledge, and then there's Arsane Lupus. <laughs> okay, that had two characters. Anyway, uh, the loop is a wonderful, wonderful card game. Very, very card game, cooperative game. Uh, very difficult, but where you are trying to complete different uh scenario objectives um by going to different eras of time that Dr. Foe is going and creating a bunch of butterfly effects and and uh, uh, paradoxes. He has a different bunch of different versions of himself that you're kind of trying to go mitigate where he's at, get them to the correct timeline, uh, although before they start creating breaches and flipping over, because you have these different objectives in each region that you're trying to accomplish, and you're trying to get a certain number of those while also doing the scenario whatever the scenario is calling for and as time goes on he's going to be dropping a certain number of red cubes in this in this little middle tower there equal to uh uh, where you're at in the game as well as how many of his tokens are in that spot so you can't just let him pile up otherwise you're gonna be dropping like six red cubes in a spot and then each section can only hold three. If a fourth one goes in pandemic kind of style, it explodes and it flips and you can no longer do that objective. So if you made a bunch of progress towards that, all that is lost and you can only handle so many of those. So you also can go and you get different types of items. Like you have your own that you start with as a special character and you have a character that's, that has a special ability. 
um, but you're getting all these different technologies that have icons up at the top left. And what's really cool about this game is you'll have a certain number of cards face up in front of you for your turn, and you can use them, but you can use these green cubes, you can spend them to reactivate a certain symbol. So if you kind of do a certain build, you can get, oh, if you have three cards out to have that star symbol, like the Cola Instable, you can use all of those and then spend one green cube to reactivate them. And then you could spend two green cubes to reactivate them. You can kind of keep looping to use your own abilities. It's a really neat system uh, that is just extremely difficult, which a friend of mine was kind of like upset the first time we played this that we lost. And I was like, well, no, I want to lose. I want to lose co-op games because when you beat them all the time, it's like, well, figure it out. Like, yeah. I don't want to play a co-op game to win all the time. Right. Uh, as long as you're just not getting trounced or you have some agency throughout the game. And if you lose, then you're like, okay, well, we did our best shot. Um, Yeah, it it just it's just a really unique one. Like, I don't know if they're done. I think they could add more content to it. I think the scenarios can be really neat. Uh, very creative. They have a they have, they do a really cool like sheet. Um, I know some games do this, but kind of like just different challenges that you put stickers on. Just it, that's just kind of a nice little element for this game. I feel like I'm more inclined to do it for this one. I don't know why, but yeah, that cube tower with the splicing three sections is a nice kind of change where you're like, oh, I don't know. Like, I really hope these were, these five red cubes were dropping. Don't go in that pink zone because we have four uh, progress towards it. But yeah, this game looks like it's not going over too well for the players. <laughs> but yeah, very whimsical. Like the, the technologies are kind of crazy and some of them can be really busted. Like that laser one that's at the uh, top left. That's a kind of like a black hole symbol, which since it doesn't have a symbol, you can't loop it. Uh, but that's because that's, they typically have really powerful abilities. So yeah, if you're looking for a kind of a unique, fun, rompy co-op game that's still very, very challenging with extra ways to make it hard, I would recommend The Loop. That's my number 45. All righty. Well, my number 45 was 20 last year, so it dipped also and i know the reason this went down is because it hasn't been played not because i don't want to play it it's just because it's kind of a busy one to set up um but it is still one of my favorite let me see here maybe yeah it's probably my favorite star wars game um currently until we'll, we'll see how unlimited is and all that stuff when it comes out um and that is Star Wars Outer Rim. Um, back in the day before this game came out, I enjoyed Firefly quite a bit. Um, and it, but it just took forever. It was a super long game. It was kind of, you know, um, and then, I, you know, we talked about it when this game got announced. It just popped out as an announcement. And I was like, this is just fantasy flight, just trying to cash grab, you know, it kind of looked weird. Yeah, yeah. And the board was, you know, with this half, the, the arch board and all that stuff. And then I got to looking at it more and more and I went on ahead and took the dive and I'm glad I did because it totally kills Firefly. I'll never touch fire, fire, Firefly again. This gets done a lot faster than Firefly. The theme is awesome. Um, and it just feels it's it, it it has a really cool decision space for this game because pretty much what it is is it's competitive you're starting off as a as a lowly kind of a uh, kind of a crappy dude you know kind of a scoundrel type deal and but you get of to choose scum there, and villainy <laughs> there's there's freedom in this game you start off with a basic ship but you get to choose how you want to play this game. I mean, you're going to have a personal objective, so that kind of gears you a little bit. But but you could be, you could do good stuff. I mean, you could go out and um, take out, because uh, there's warring factions, the, the Rebellion and the 
and the uh, the rebels and the imperial they're fighting around in the outer rim you can take those guys out and that kind of helps you that's one thing you can do you could just do honest to got honest jobs pick up and deliver um but you can also go the other way and you can uh well you collect bounties that's another one so there'll be bounties that'll pop up you can go and take those guys out and get paid um you can also deliver um bad stuff like illegal like cargo type stuff um yeah and you can uh just do a lot of like you can choose kind of how you go and you could do that and firefly and all that stuff too but you choose this but what's cool is you can recruit characters to your ship so they have like a lot of the classic characters you know you can get on solo on your ship you can get chewy you can get all these different stuff right um and these characters go on your ship they give you different abilities you do different stuff you win when you get 10 um can't remember what they're called 10 uh reputation points is that what it's called i gotta look there's there's I don't 10... know. no no i know it's it's on the tongue <laughs> it's why are you asking me <laughs> um also, why are you talking like that ten Think fame, about it yeah you, you, getting 10 fame wins it so um but you go through and you just do all that cool stuff that that this game came out everybody liked it and then it just kind of did the fantasy flight thing and just kind of no, they no, but nothing happened with it. It just kind of just stopped. Three three years to put out that expansion. Yeah, and then the expansion came out, and that just got everybody hyped again because it added a lot of new characters, add more ships, add more just more stuff, you know. And it yeah. and it was really cool. But I'm still I'm almost wondering if they're going to throw one more expansion at this game because they missed their mark. I mean, they didn't, they didn't have the Mandalorian or, or Grogu or any of that in that expansion, you know, like, like that's, I mean, that's printing money. If you throw that, even if it's a small expansion, you just throw a little deal in it just to have them in there. I mean, it's a, it's a damn bounty hunter type game. You'd think that would, well, do they fit. have the new characters like Ray and Finn and all of them? Are they in the game? Some, some, not all, but some, okay. I mean, it's because I know but, typically like, rebellions added the rogue one stuff right i'm assuming is also in this game because that's kind of like it touches trilogy it it it, kind of combines a lot of stuff i mean it's okay um but what's what i like about it is the uh, you upgrade your ship so like you can you start off that ship there at the very bottom this is what you'll start off with everybody starts off with the same ship but then you upgrade it and you can purchase stuff so you could actually get, get a freighter it looks like the, not not the Millennium Falcon necessarily, and I mean, but it's the same kind of ship, so you can upgrade your ships. Um, and it's so just, it's did just... they, if if you like Zaya, would this game or if, like would this game basically be the equivalent of that? I like just this better this... than Zaya because Zaya is has a randomness factor that I, I mean, I I'm, I like Zaya. It's not a bad game. But the randomness to it is a little different. Like this one, you have more control over mm-hmm. your stuff. Zaya, I mean, you could go explore and blow up on a damn sun or something, you know, depending on how things go. Yeah. Um, that one is more free. I mean, you can do more weird shit in Zaya, you know, you can okay. kind of, but this one's more of a, you can still choose your path, but it's more of a deterministic. Like you can kind of pick your deal as less randomness. Okay. Um, it's just it's just a good one. I mean, you know, it's it's it hit on the things that I liked. It it killed a couple of games that I used to like. So I mean, it's just kind of it's just kind of there. And I'm still waiting on Mando to join the crowd, but we'll see. Maybe in three more years, two more years, whatever. Yeah, that's true. It'll be 2025 before. Well, remember, they announced you know it. how how many years was it for War of the Rings expansion to come out? <laughs> Yeah, apparently, yeah, <laughs> War of the Ring came out in twenty. The second edition came out in twenty eleven. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, you know, they could always pop out with stuff. Fantasy Flight's weird nowadays. So yeah. All right, my number forty four. This is my new one of this segment, and it's actually really interesting because you mentioned brass in this segment, and my new one, I personally think is heavily inspired by brass but i i like this one i mean it's in my top 100 and brass isn't uh and that is yeah i need to try this one 
Nucleum is phenomenal. And funny enough, a friend of mine who he's his new girlfriend, well, not new at this point, but she's into board games and he I ran into him the other day and he he brought this one up. He's like, Yeah, this is like our current favorite. And I was like, Oh my god, it's so good. Um yeah, Simone Luciani. Who that man. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead. Calm down. Calm down. <laughs> I'll be right back. Um and David Turchy. They they knocked it out of the park once again with Nucleum. Uh this is kind of like um alternate history nuclear power uh running uh power plants it there's a lot going on but it's all stuff that i very much enjoy with like public objectives and uh personal objectives while also using this really interesting um domino kind of effect where all of your actions are on these domino kind of pieces if you move your mouse up to the top left kind of where those railroad pieces are yeah. those so under those are your actions so what you do is you you start out with five i think and you can either place them uh on your player board and do the top and or bottom action very free flowing with that or you can actually place them down as a railroad um to connect because each end has a color. So if you connect the colors, then you get to do the action as well as whoever owns the other piece of the railroad. If you connect with them, they get to do it, that colored action. Uh, but you're expanding out your network, getting nucleum uh, or nuclear cubes. And what's great about this is no one can take them from you. <laughs> They're yours. <laughs> so you can spend them to power up different buildings there's three types of buildings uh you also are, are not limited on how you build those out uh, like in brass you have to do them in order this one you don't uh but you have to kind of carry uh coal through these connected railroads either coal or if you have a nuclear plant cubes to energize your buildings um and it just like that domino system is so awesome. Uh, the expanding your network is awesome. The way that you go up because you're trying to get these tokens. I can't remember what I always forget what they're called. They're either fame or prestige tokens because whenever you reset, you calculate all that up, and that's what that colored ribbon track is over on the far left of how far you go up. You place one of your stars down. Because that's end game victory points, and how far you are up on that will be a multiplier of that. So, the first one is your yellow buildings. So, that one can either be each yellow building can be worth one point, or each yellow building can be worth two points, depending on how far up you are. And then the next one is like turbines that could be worth three points per turbine or four, and they just get exponentially higher as you. As the, the more fame that you collect and you place your star out. Uh, yeah, this one is just insane. Like, this was kind of like the design that I played that I looked over and I was like, who is this designer? And that's how I came across Simone and I was looking at and I was like, oh my god, his resume! That guy just walks in and he just throws it on the table and they're like, whatever you want to make. Yeah, here's money. Him and David Turchy uh, just co-designing together this game is absolutely fantastic just feels good the entire time and they do another really cool element where it's not showing on here but your personal board um the further you go up doing various actions you can either increase how much money you get how many workers you get and how many victory points you get there's three tracks you can go up on but yeah whenever i mention you take your action domino and you place it in front of you you only collect those three things depending on how many action discs or action tiles you place in front of you. Um, so, for example, if you get your victory point track all the way to the end, you have to do like 10 actions in front of you before you reset to get those 20 points or whatever they might be. Otherwise, if you only do three in front of you, you're going to get like two. Um, so you don't always capitalize off of how far those tracks are. Um, just another really cool element. The solo for this, it has to be David's best, in my opinion. It's one of them. Just the way that 
the AI works in this blows my mind because I don't know how he was able to design it. So it's better than with... Anachrony? No. Well, I like Anachrony more, I think, actually. Well, no, I, based off my uh, top 100, I don't. Well, um, I was meaning the solo mode because Turksy made the solo mode for that. That's why I was... Right, yeah. It's like both of those designs are just insane to me because how they work is just so integrated that it's like i i because this one a big thing of nucleum is what's considered your network which is kind of just where you have um pieces like if you have your own building in like let's say carlsbad down at the bottom purple that's kind of where you have to kind of expand from although you can build railroads wherever uh you can only build buildings and move stuff from your own network and the ai also takes that into consideration it uh which is just something that was that would typically be ignored right. in a lot of games and it's been a long time since i've done anachrony solo variant so i need to yeah. give that another shot but yeah i don't know where nucleum's gonna gonna land uh, it might actually be even higher because they did announce an expansion, which I pre-ordered because I think this game is fantastic. So, yeah, Nucleum, a better Brass, in my opinion. It's very much inspired by Brass, and um, I I say Power Grid, but there's another game that I think people compare this to. It's kind of like a mishmash of two games, Brass certainly being one of them. Yeah, I'll give so. it a shot sometime for sure because I know I showed the box cover to Amy and she was intrigued. So, yeah, I'd be very, very surprised if you guys didn't like it, especially yeah. if you like Simone as a designer and David as a designer and Brass. Right. And I mean, this is like your game. All right. Good to know. All right. Well, my number 44 is my new game on this list. Ooh. Um, this is one I showed you, and I'm not sure if you have a copy now i think you bought a copy i'm not sure um this one really surprised me this year um it was one that came out uh and my wife actually saw the cover and was like hey get that one and i was like okay fine because it didn't the cover isn't that awe-inspiring but um it ended up being to a superb two-player experience um, I actually played it twice this last weekend as well um, with different people and had a blast playing it with them, taught it to them, and they loved it as well. And that is Beer and Bread. Um, yeah, this one, I thought it was in, oh, it was my 104. Okay. Um, this yes, one, a copy. yeah, this one, you know, um, this I don't know that this one because this one came out two player it's competitive but it's it's a friendly kind of competitive you know and we talked about that when we played it because pretty much you are your neighboring farms there's a river in between you guys uh the water resource is unlimited um and you only have a certain amount of storage for resources so if you if you ever go over that storage fact then you have to offer anything that you don't have room for to your neighbor and they have a cho chance to take it so it's like it's 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 just always you're always just getting stuff you're always it's like you're sharing you know but you're not like you still have to compete against yeah. each other but um i will say one thing real quick because it relates <laughs> to what you just said yeah. is what you offer to your neighbor they can only take if they have room for it right um, cause they can't, they can't like jettison stuff to make room for you're giving them. Right. Right, that, right. Because I played this recently, I was showing it to a friend of mine and that actually kind of on, on a repeat play, I was like, I don't know if I like that as much because yeah, it's supposed to be kind of like, Hey, here neighbor. Oh, you don't have a room. Oh, I'm sorry. Throw it away. I, I might play this again and house rule that what you're offering your your opponent can uh, get rid of stuff so i actually would... we actually already did that to be honest with oh you. okay <laughs> yeah i mean well cause... the rules okay because the actual rules are it's like if they don't have room they can't take it yeah i know we we changed just because what we've discussed in, in this game because it, it takes there's six rounds of this game mm -hmm. six it goes over six years and 
you know, to get the resources rolling because resources are limited in certain aspects and the dry seasons and stuff that uh, you getting stuff enough resources to build stuff, you know, and getting the right stuff. This is one of those house rules. If you do the house rule, even if you don't do the house rule, I mean, it's still, if you're both doing the same thing, it works fine. I mean, you're both going to yeah. benefit from that rule, whether even if you do change it. But every at the beginning of every plentiful season, you're going to throw in a uh, green number amount of, of those resources. And on a dry season, it's the red amount. So you have to watch it. But what's cool is this brings in a card drafting things. So you'll start off with five different cards. And all the card backs, you know, there's bread cards, beer cards. Backs are different. But you're going to, in the, in the plentiful season, you're going to pick one of those cards and do something with it. And then you pass it to the your neighbor and then they pick one, pass it. And you kind of go through that way. Um, you can play the cards for different ways. There's three different things you can do with the cards. You can play them and get the resources that are on the top of the card. Um, you can play them into your bakery or brewery. If you have the resources to build or to, to make that particular item. Um, or you can play it as a, upgrade which yeah. you see here they kind of just slide them underneath and those are upgrades some of them are in game scoring some of them add extra areas to store stuff um but you only have room in your brewery and bakery unless you have an upgrade you only have room for one card at a time so you place those cards in there and they won't count for victory points on you until you clean them out so you have to play an upgrade somewhere and that pulls them out into your score area um dry season you don't do the drafting of cards any of the cards mm -hmm. you played in front of you you take for resources you take back in your hand you draw back up to five and then there's going to be an exchange area so you can exchange cards and do stuff so you won't you won't draft at that point you have to so there's kind of a gamesmanship in there a little bit the scoring of this though is is interesting because you're going to score all your bread you're going to score all your beer, but the lowest of the two is your victory points. Now you have modifiers that you get in game modifiers for points and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, game takes about 30 minutes, especially if you don't, if you both know how to play it, you can fly through a game of this really, really yeah, quickly. Very quick. Um, for a, it was only like 25 bucks to get this game. Mm -hmm. And it has nice wood components, nice cards. It's a small box. I mean, that, that was a no brainer, especially if you have a two player if you have a second player, like that, this is me and Amy's go-to two-player game. Like we play it it's quite super a bit. Good. Yeah, it and, has legs on it. So. Yeah, and and you know, I it doesn't even really need an expansion. I mean, it's it's this is one of those games that I'd has. Be mad enough. if they added one because that box yeah. is kind of full. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> already yeah. with just yeah. what they have. Um. So yeah, I mean, if this is if you like two-player games and have a and don't like because it's not mean. This is not a mean game per se. The only the only thing you really do against people is maybe taking resources before they do like, you know, and it runs out, but yeah. there's, there's ways to get but, around. I mean, resources yeah. stack like so much. Uh, if you're like, Oh, I really want to play this card because it's worth a lot of points. It'll even me out. Then just play it as a resource and then pop it back into your hand. Right. Um, for the fall. Yeah. yeah. So it's a good one. It's so a really anyway, good one. Yeah. This one is a high premiere of 44 and it'll, probably do well next year as well so cool all right my number 43 the rest of these are gonna rise this one was 115 last year so i've had a lot that just was we're in the hundreds apparently <laughs> what was it endless winter was 100 turing machine was 194 and this one was 115 and in 2021 it was 124 uh so somehow some way it blows my mind a little bit because I really like this game and they have supported the hell out of it. One that I still need to do a tournament for. I just need to find the time to do it. Um, and it's crazy because I absolutely hated the first edition. And that is oh, yeah. Summoner Wars. Uh, so Summoner Wars was, yeah, like I said, I really hated the first edition, but they kind of fixed the major issues I had with that, um, and fixed it in this, uh, where it has customized dice and you're actually like, you can still miss, 
because it's a it's a card skirmish game, and you pick a faction, and your faction is uh like completely unique from all the other factions. They all have a different kind of play style, and uh you maneuver on this this yeah grid based board kind of like uh to where you're trying to defeat the other person's summoner. And whenever you're attacking other people's units, you 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 know do range. If you're melee, you have to attack adjacent units. If you're range, you do orthogonal, unblock sections, and you roll dice. But the dice are more than likely going to hit. You can still miss, but it's very rare, so it's not that frustrating. Unlike the first edition where you missed all the time. Um, but I just love how many factions there are now, and they're all so unique. From like desert dwarves and vampire goblins. I know it's th those aren't real factions, but that's kind of like how how kind of like crazy that the the factions are. Um, and like like that's pretty much it. Like you like each faction has like magic. Uh, so as you defeat units, you gain magic, and then you can play cards to gain magic. You can get rid of cards to gain magic because that's what you need to spend to play these cards. Uh, and there's events that you can do that are active, that stay out to benefit you. There's one-time use events. I just, again, love how much content there is. Like, I don't know how many... Um, they're, they're not slowing down. I, I listen, And they are not. You're, you're correct. I, I follow their podcast because I worked for this company as a playtester several mm -hmm. years ago with first edition and uh, <clears throat> and um they have so much more coming down the pipe too so i mean it's gonna be so much this game that i i like the changes that they made i i was a huge fan of the original um the guild dwarves those were my those were my faction i worked the most on but um i like what they did because the dice like you said they hit but in, in order to make it where it was still fair, they gave all the units because there's there are repeat units from some of the factions that were in the first edition, but they mm -hmm. made the units have more hit points. So you may not kill them, but you are hitting them. So it makes it, it's a feel good. Like you're, you're, you feel yeah. like he's doing something. And then um, this game actually fell 104 for me. And the only reason it did make my top 100 because it would have is I have not played my physical copy. Um, I have all the factions. I still do it, but I play it online because they have that. Okay. Because I, I mean, I, so that's why I didn't really put as much weight into it because I haven't played the physical. I've anytime I try the new factions, I play the online component. So, you know, what I'm saying like, like interesting. Feel, so you didn't take that into consideration. With not as much. Okay. Not as much. I mean, I. When I got to thinking about it, I was like, I haven't played the physical. It's it feels cheap to take a spot when I haven't actually played the played it on table, you know? Like, okay. like if, we, if we played it, I would probably jump right back up high. It's just like yeah. kind of, that's why it's I want to do I want to do the tournament with you. Right. Um, because the only other person I could do it with consistently, uh, he doesn't like the game. Oh, um, yeah. to be fair, the the game well, he because we ended up in a situation where um, it was a really bad kind of like game because our summoners were the only ones that were left. And they add, I don't know if this was in the first edition, but if you don't attack, then you take a damage. That was not. Um, okay. So that, that's kind of to promote attacking. You can't yeah. just turtle up because if you don't attack on your turn, if you don't attack something, I think your summoner takes a damage. Um, so what happened was our summoners were the only ones that were left. But he had more damage than I did, so I just kept running from him. <laughs> and so I was like, "You can't!" I'm like, "You can't catch up to me." Yeah. And I was trying, and he was like getting mad at me, and I was like, "Dude, let's just call it. Like, you, you, you can't catch up to me. You can't hit me. I'm gonna keep doing this. There's no point in in finishing this out. Like, because also, what's cool about Summoner Wars is your deck is it. So if you yeah. run out of cards, you don't reshuffle. Um, so there's a management of that as well. I also counted um, uh, the expansions. I think there are 16. Yep. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 
11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 individual factions mm -hmm. on top of the starter set that they added with the Frost Trolls and the Phoenix Elves, I think. Yes. So there's 18. And I think there were five, five or six in the main, in the core box. So six, I believe. Okay. So 24 factions. Yeah. There were six. Um, and this game came box. out a couple of years ago. So they are pumping it out. And two of those technically are coming out in 2024. Um, the Storm Goblins and the Shimmer Sea, Shimmer Sea Fae. Why yeah. did that sound weird? Because I wanted to say Shimmer She. I wanted to be well, her, her did, Shimmer She. Did fae. you buy that upgraded like components and stuff for it? No, I think I got the playmat. Yeah, I, I got the playmat and then I did the, because uh, on there you Acrylic. could pre-order on their site. And stuff mm -hmm. with, and I so I got like the acrylic, like all the tokens and like the yeah. special dice or white dice with different colored, like the arrows are I think yellow and the ones are green and yeah. stuff. It's it's it is aesthetics, but but no, I yeah, mean this is I mean, this is a great one. Yep, and uh, yeah, just these faction names are like just something you never see, like storm mm -hmm. goblins, obsidian dwarves. Bungle dwarves, a lot, yeah. of, a lot of like dwarves actually, a lot of goblins too. Sand I, goblins. I was very happy when they got back on their own two feet as Plat Hat Games and started bringing this back because this was always one of my favorite games mm. uh, back in the day. And, it's so tactical too, like yeah. this game, and it like both sides on the player board like just tell you exactly what order it's easy mm -hmm. to jump into, and. Again, I don't know if this was in first edition, but and I haven't done it in second edition, but there's deck customization. Yeah, um, big time in first edition. Okay. I have not touched that at all. I don't know how those rules work, but it's there if you like to deck customize. Uh, yeah. If you have your, your faction that you like, um, which yeah. I haven't found a faction that I like. Like, I haven't, I haven't found a go-to yet, but I haven't tried every faction yet. Hence the tournament. Yeah, so, in the in the original, it was just stay within your faction. You can only have a certain number of one certain unit, and then um, you could bring mercenaries in because there was mercenaries that you could okay. pour it in. But that you could only have so many champions. You know, you could only have you only had three champions. Yeah. I think in the first. So, so anyway, yeah, nope, good, good one. And like I said, if I was putting this on the table, it would definitely be higher. I just didn't mm -hmm. feel like feel right. If we end up doing stuff. the tournament anytime this year. Next year, it'll definitely be oh, yeah. up there for you. Oh, yeah. For sure. So, 43 sure. Summoner Wars. All right, my number 43 was 13 last year. And they're just um, tanking from the top 20. Well, there's a lot that moved up. There. <laughs> when we get it there, there's a lot of good stuff that jumped up. But um, this one is one of those games. They're done making content for this game. Uh, there's another version of this game that um, is kind of helping and dropping this one down. Um and I haven't really played this one a whole lot. That's why it fell off. I will be playing it next weekend, though, because my um, I'm playing games with some friends that want to play it, and that is Role Player. Um, Role Player back in its time uh, was a unique game that came, that popped out. You know, dice placement. You're pretty much just creating your character, um, and then you know that was. This was kind of Thunderworks' first kind of big hit, um, and then it spawned a whole world. Um, they started pumping expansions. The first expansion for this was the one that everybody was cl clamoring for to get to where you could actually fight with your people and and do stuff. So that brought in the monsters and minions, and then they brought in the familiars um, fiends, and fiends, fiends and fiends familiars. familiars. That brought other stuff. So there was. It brought in a bunch of extra cool stuff with that. Um, and then the big thing that everybody was looking for is, hey, I want to be able to use these characters on an adventure. And then that's when Role Player Adventures came out. Um, so Role Player Adventures is what I was saying is what's getting more play than this nowadays, just because yeah. it brings the story. I mean, it's like you almost kind of play this to right. carry your character into Role Player Adventures. Yeah. Right. So that's why this one it may just continue to fall you know a lot of all the pen i'm was since I'm, I'm teaching this to a group of three other players next weekend um so it'll all be intrigued to see how it holds up 
at that point. But, um, but yeah, so you pick, you pretty much just pick a race. Um, they're double sided boards. You can have the female male version, which is always nice for, for this. And then you're, you are getting, you know, your different, uh, roles and stuff and you are trying to it's a puzzle you you're you trying to draft dice and get them put into your character sheet and trying to match the colors to get victory points uh, as in the like the aristocrat card and then you're trying to get the numbers add up in the column you're trying to make a range to get the victory points for that as well as well as you know getting uh, getting cards that may be personality tweaks or items or there's just a lot of cool stuff with this game, especially since they've had all the expansion stuff to it. Um, all the while you're building up, um, especially in the Feast of Familiars, you're building up to fight that big boss at the end, you know, and that's kind of your deal. So this one is always a, a, a favorite when we get it, when I, when I show it to somebody, they always enjoy it. Um, mm -hmm. this kind of came out around that that Sagrada time, you know, they kind of had that same yeah. feel with dry, dice drafting. I mean, they're not the same by any means, but, you know, you kind of get that same little bit feel with it. If you like the fantasy stuff, then this is a cool thing with it. But if you do play this and end up liking it, then you can bring these characters into role player adventures and keep moving along with that character in that story as well, which is why... Mm -hmm that one is going to get gets more play you know um and plus like i said i think they're going to keep they're going to keep putting stuff into role player adventures i believe and i think this one's kind of just they're done with this now this kind of set the world now there's all these games that they come out with in this world with cartographers and and all their other branch offs and stuff yeah whatever like donna Vulos, which yeah no one talked about and the the jail one the prison one but oh yeah I lock out or lock up or something like that lock out lock up yeah so lock anyway up. this one it fell 30 spots this time it may fall more it may fall slide right into the spot we'll see you know it but but uh the it, it fell for a reason and it's just because it's you know it's it came out in 2016 so i mean it's been out for eight years and and mm -hmm. uh other stuff's just kind of pushing it back yeah. Yeah. Fantastic game. We will most likely be talking about it later. Huh? My number 42. What? I said, okay. I what was agreeing saying? with you. I was what agreeing you with you. Me? You like this oh, game better than me. My huh? number 42. <laughs> I do. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I also cheat a little bit because I can buy it. Yeah, I figured. Um, for, the, for the same reason we just talked about. I mean, kind of spoiler, it is higher on my list, but yeah. it's I play role player to play role player yeah. adventures yeah um so uh my number 42 rose it was 45 last year uh and it was 50 in 2021 um which is surprising because i actually haven't played this game recently at all but i'm gonna because i finally got the goddamn shipping notification for my stuff for this and it's super funny because if you take a look at what the ranking of like the new version of this game is, it is bad. <laughs> um, but my number 42 is Robinson Crusoe Adventures on the Cursed Island or of the Cursed Island. Is it on Adventures on the Cursed Island? Yes. Um, yeah, so the new version, um, is so Robinson Crusoe. The Adventures on the Cursed Island that was done by Game Found, uh, not Game Found, <laughs> Awakened Realms. It is impossible to find. Uh, but that's okay. Because it doesn't exist. It doesn't exist. Yeah, yeah they're shipping me just a fat <laughs> turd collector's edition. <laughs> it is a three point one, <laughs> the collector's edition, and I think that's mainly because Portal shit the bed so hard on this on that on that uh project so i don't know but that doesn't really take away from this game because you could still get the game the base game of this and it is uh fantastic it is a insanely brutal cooperative game 
kind of around the time that these games these these games were coming out they just the insanely hard co-ops uh scenario based you pick a scenario that will have an objective and it's kind of like a it it does a really interesting element that your workers are these discs that you kind of program in various sections like whether you want to use your own personal ability whether you want to go out and explore whether you want to craft or uh or hunt or whatever it might be because you're trying to survive you need food every single night uh you want to create tools that will help you uh go hunting to get food and you want tools to uh help you preserve food um but you got to go out and explore because some sections of the map will not yield as much resources as you might want for your various scenario um this game is honestly clunky as all hell, so I'm hoping that the Collector's Edition kind of cleans that up. Who knows? Uh, like, what? <laughs> I don't know. I don't even know. I, I've double-checked my pledge for that because I'm like, what the hell am I getting? Like, I don't really... I, it's been so long, I don't remember. Um, But the the fact of the matter is, is, like, the cooperative nature of this game is huge. You can send one person to go out and explore, for example, but so you can divide your your workers up a little bit more um but you run the risk of failing so if you're going to go out and explore you actually have to roll dice and you might get injured you might come across an event and this game was the first to kind of use this event system that i personally do where it has a top section of what's happening and the bottom section is the result um i never look at the result because you wouldn't really know what would happen. So you just read, it's like, oh, you come across a cave that has a bunch of food in it. Do you take it? And it's like, oh, sure. Yeah, we absolutely need food. And then you shuffle that deck or that card into your event deck. And they're different colored backs, which is kind of a shame because now you know when it's coming up. Uh, but you draw that one and it's like, oh, the food attracted bears. Now fight a bear. It's like, okay, cool. We don't have any defenses or any weapons. This is going to be brutal. Um, but I always really liked that. I thought that was cool with a consequence to your decisions. Um, there's also weather that you have to fare. It's, it's a really solid co-op survival game um, that another game, Frostpunk, kind of did the exact same thing of survival uh, and the event deck. You know, hey, here's a decision we made shuffle that into the event deck it might come back later but they also they made the backs the same so you don't know when that's coming up but yeah love the scenario base i know the collector's edition is coming with a scenario book where it's all rebalanced it's supposed to be rebalanced and kind of reorganized in a, with difficulty scaling and and all that i don't remember it's been so long with portal and all that I know it's definitely tainted their company's name for a lot, but yeah, it's uh this one is still a really, really good co-op game. So that's my forty two. I still have it in shrink downstairs. I haven't opened it. <laughs> <laughs> um well, <clears throat> all right. Play my... it. Huh? Oh yeah. I said we'll play it. <laughs> <laughs> I will at some point. I have to do it by myself though, because my wife doesn't like cooperative games. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so my number forty-two was eighty-three last year. So what? Hey. Yeah. There we go. And I've come to the conclusion that there's one way to play this game, um, and it's not to play a bunch of games in a row because you get fatigue and you start hating the elements of the game. So if you play it a game or two at a time, uh, you know. Am, I, am I the example? Am I the shining example of this game? You're part of this example, yes. <laughs> and that is the dice throne. This is one that, and I'm kind of lumping in um, like the adventures and stuff into it because that brings in another way to play oh, it. Oh, you do it for well, this one, but not role player, huh? Well, because that's, <laughs> you, yeah, I mean, you're still playing dice throne though in that, like it's the different role player adventures, you know, I mean, I, I guess that's, that is fair. That is fair. It's the, pretty much you're playing dice throne, just, yeah. So, um, this one, you know, if you play it a bunch in a row, man, it, it's brutal. Even if you're winning, I mean, it just kind of gets 
it gets rough. I hate but this game. <laughs> I'm I, so, I've, so over it. <laughs> I've played this game a bunch over the last year, but I do it in, you know, a couple games here, a couple games there, and it's fun when you just do it for that amount, you know? Uh, no strings attached to it. You just run through it. And then the cool way, I, whenever I'm playing by myself, the adventure stuff is really fun. Um, I back the X-Men stuff. Um, so I'm, I'm excited to try the missions because that's supposed to be really solo friendly, even more than mm. adventures. So I'm curious to see what that does. Um, but uh, pretty much this is your Yahtzee style dice combat game. You're, you, you're going after the other person 1v1. You can play it more than 1v1, but you'd be a moron if you do. 1v1 is the the only way to really that's do this competitively. Picture. It's a pyromancer, I don't know. Looks like looks like it's an old school, like first edition. Okay, I'm like, I'm like, is this adventures? I'm like, no way. No, no, no. This this is like a first okay. edition, I think, because they didn't do the flat boards and stuff as much. Yeah. Or it could be prototype even. I don't know. Anyway. True. This is or looks like an early edition though, because it's got the white borders and stuff on the cards. Mm -hmm. But, but um, you're pretty much just rolling your dice, Yahtzee style. You're allotting your dice to to fire off different uh, um abilities and stuff, and you're using those to do damage to the other person, and they get a chance to do defense, and you're just kind of going back and forth. You have your own personal deck for your hero that has different stuff in it. You're using your combat points as your currency to do different things. Um, and you just go back and forth until there's a winner. I mean, it's as simple as that, really. I mean, you're um, there are complexities of different heroes. Uh, we went through and did the whole Marvel box. Um, and I thoroughly got my ass kicked, I think, in every match. Uh, and I think you won one really <laughs> but, I, I don't remember i can't either but um but you know there, there's a lot of really cool different um unique kind of characters in it you know and there are some that are are overpowered they've done some re rebalancing of some of the characters that you get in certain things um but i know they have a competitive scene with this game um i don't know if i would be able to handle that many games in a row now that we've done a tournament you know like like yeah just because you can't you can't play this game in my mind like i've because i've played competitive with netrunner and all that stuff a lot and you do take those things seriously this is one of those games you really honestly cannot take it too seriously because you're gonna get fucked and you can't be butthurt about it or else it's just gonna and the more you play it and if you're doing tournament style I mean, just like when we played that tournament, I was getting butt hurt because I couldn't fucking roll anything. And it just yeah. keeps compiling and compiling. So if you're just playing two matches, one or two games, just do it. Wipe your hands. You're done. Yeah. It's fun. Yeah. I just, I just don't. Yeah. So many people, <laughs> like, I'm sure there is strategy to it. But at the end of the day, if you don't roll what you need to roll, mm -hmm. there's nothing you can do about it. I mean, there is. There's cards that can help you mitigate it, but you eventually run out of combat points. Right. So, I mean, if I always roll well and never have to spend combat points and you don't, mm -hmm. I will win. Yeah. <laughs> That's just the nature of the game. Um, yeah. I, yeah, like I know with the new stuff that's coming out, we're going to try it. Um, this game makes me exhausted just thinking about it. I would, I would just like, go ahead. I was just. Oh, I was going to say, because sometimes there'll be games I don't like, but then as time goes on, like kind of with Sniper oh. Elite, I was like, eh, okay, a four is, that's a little bit too low. I'll give it a five. This one, I'm like, yeah, I think, <laughs> I think instead of us playing those characters, the new characters, I think we just need to do missions, you know, yeah, do the missions box competitive or cooperatively and just get the feel for that. I think, I think that's the best way. The adventures box and, I, and I think missions will be the best way to do this because that's true. They, they're cooperative. So then you kind of, mm -hmm. it's kind of like we were talking about one of the games earlier about the daunted. Yeah. The cooperative aspect, yeah. you, you kind of have a cheerleader or someone to blame, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> You're sharing the misery or right, the right. delight. 
Right. Exactly. So this one made that big jump because I get it out a lot because it's really quick. Mm -hmm. Just throw it on the table and go and it and it goes over well for yeah. short. I will give Roxley credit because <clears throat> I, I know for a fact that because of the tournament scene and through my own experience, there are characters that are purely un <laughs> like they're not balanced. They have I mean, just from the season one and two, they're not balanced, but they did come out and release. I think an update pack to balance them out, yeah. which is yep. that's good that that's there. Um, but it's like at the same time, it's kind of like, well, you should have play tested it more. Yeah. Um, shouldn't have had to release an update pack, but oh well, this is how I view certain things. Yep. All right. Bad choice. <laughs> uh, <laughs> All right, my number 41, and the last one for this segment, Rose. It was 43 last year, um, and it was 29 the year before. And I would actually ra raise this even more because I have recently played this game. I got the newest expansion, played it uh, with a friend of mine, and I was like, I'm like, I think this could be played two players because I was looking at it, and it says one to five. And I'm like, okay, well, that's interesting. How would you play this one player? And that's through a different version. But the two player is very interesting. Uh, and that is Detective City of Angels. Uh, yeah, this one, the, the mode I played is the head to head mode, which is the two player variant that they have where it's one chiseled versus one detective. And they kind of just make it a little bit simpler. They don't, you don't have to deal with money. You don't deal with bribing. But you're, it's still one versus. And the chiseled really is just kind of like trying to stall for time. Like I always kind of say that the chiseled player is kind of the DM. Not really, as I've recently played the chiseled. They're more of a game manager. Um, because they, whenever you're playing multi, multiple people. So Detective is a whodunit uh, game. Sherlock Holmes, Chronicles of Crime, uh, Detective Modern Crime board game. You know, pick your whodunit game it's exactly that with a case the major difference and why i like this game so much is because it's competitive it is one chiseled and the chisel is like the person who knows the story he's the one managing the search locations he's the one managing the uh evidence he's the one uh acting as the characters um acting like basically choosing their form of dialogue um and the chiseled is technically trying to win like if no one solves the case and the chiseled wins but all the other players are competing as well they're you know detectives homicide detectives going and talking to people doing whatever method they can to get to get their uh get their answer um but it's really the first person who solves it everyone gets a solve token and they can turn it in and hand the you know the chiseled who you know wh who they think did it how they did it and why, and if they're right, then they win. Um, there's, I think, twenty cases now with the newest expansion, all varying from Gumshoe, which is their easiest, to Hard Boiled, which is the hardest. Um, but you have various actions that you're gonna move, you're gonna bribe, you're gonna, and you know, search suspects, you're gonna question them, you're gonna search locations, and all of that is just wrapped up in really great storytelling fantastic whodunit cases but the fact that it's competitive is so unique like as and but here's the other thing you don't want to compete there's a sleuth mode makes it fully cooperative works just like the other ones um that's i mean that's the other element of this game and then in the two-player version if you're not doing the sleuth mode it's head-to-head -head. And pretty much all it removes is kind of the money because you can't bribe because the bribe element is if like if Brad's going to question someone and I have money, I can pay to bribe someone to basically get the same answer that you get. Right. Whether you get a, a, a truthful answer or not, I get to read it as well. Um, and kind of it's kind of like a clue element where it's like, well, that doesn't really match up with what I'm writing down. Hmm. But you could run with it. You could be like, oh, awesome, and start going with it. And I'm like, that doesn't really add up. Uh, that must be the lie. Because the chisel can choose kind of like to give you not necessarily a lie, but not the most useful information is what they call right. it. Because 
suspects don't really like to self-incriminate. Um, but that's a really interesting aspect of this game as well, because there's what's called leverage tokens, which are, okay, if you get leverage on this person, that means that you kind of have something on them. And if you ask them a question, hey, what do you know about old Bobby Briggs who was massacred, had his face ripped off down by the docks? It's like, oh, I don't know. I've never met Bobby. And then you're you if you have leverage on him, you could spend that to be like to have the chisel give you the most useful information. And right. if you're correct, then you you get that you're forced to get the the most useful. But if you're incorrect, then the chisel gets leverage on you, which can screw you in a number of ways. Um, or it's like you just beat up some dude who doesn't even work at the docks. <laughs> it's just like, what do you know? Where are the other drugs going? Uh, it's like, oh, so bad. I work at I work at the inn across the street. Do they still uh, get a Kickstarter with their expansions? Like this yes. last one, or was it just a retail? That was Game Found. Okay. Um, but yeah, it's it's so much fun. And what's actually great about the head to head section is because I mentioned being a DM. And the the G, the the chisel can kind of ham things up, but you don't act as these people because it's competitive. So you basically slot their response in that little envelope down there, and you hand it to the person, and they read it. Um, but in the head to head, because there's no other players, I was actually able to kind of act as these characters, you know, play music and just really get into the theme, and that was a lot of fun because you get to kind of DM it a little bit more. Uh, this game is fantastic. Van Ryder games, I know they don't do a lot. They basically have this and Final Girl uh, as like their big headliners. I really hope they keep keep doing stuff for this. 20 cases is a lot. I want more. I want double that. I want them to overshadow Sherlock Holmes. <laughs> now, I, I played this once. We played a full game um, with... Four, I think there was four player, four detectives and a chisel. I think. Oh, you yeah, the full five five player. Yeah, game. um, and I won, of course. Nice. Uh, <laughs> cool. But I had a I had a blast with it. It's just one that I didn't know how much I'd get, but knowing that there is the two player possibility, um, mm -hmm. you know, makes me interested in it because I know yeah. my wife likes this theme. She likes crime theme stuff, but all the crime games you see any, anymore are cooperative. Exactly. So she doesn't yep. like you. Know, so that would be kind of an interesting. Yeah. Twist nope. On. It is. If it's one hundred percent competitive, um, you are because in the head-to-head -head version, the um, the detective only gets one guess. If they guess and they're wrong, the chiseled wins. Um. So, yeah, it's it's fantastic. So unique. Um. So yeah, I'm glad it rose because unlike Yido, which fell, but I just played it, I was like, yay, this one went up <laughs> higher. And it would be higher than 41. But yeah, that's my All right. 41. All right. My 41 was 34 last year. This is probably going to be in that same zone that it's going to fall every year. This has been a game that's been on my list since we started doing this list. Um, I think you have played it a long time ago. You just played the base box. Um I have everything for it. It's a dead game now. Nothing is being made for it anymore because Fantasy Flight Games stopped making good games. Uh, They've <laughs> two good games now. <laughs> and that is Elder Sign. Um, this one, I agree with you. Base box, very, very, very meh. Um, but then they threw out, this came out in 2012. Um, and then they came out with Gates of Arkham, which was a decent, or not, not Gates of Arkham, uh, Force, uh, Unseen Forces was the first expansion. And that added a little bit more, but kind of stayed in the same deal. Where it really started opening up was when they went to the Gates of Arkham and then the Omens, like the Omen of Ice, Omens of the Deep, Omens of the Pharaoh. Um, that brought in a more of a, a, a story technique to or tactic part to it where you actually got to go outside of the museum and you got to go to different parts of the world and do stuff and things would happen. And there was more, um, more story to it. Uh, not, mm -hmm. and I don't mean like reading like story, story, but just more theme, I guess, I guess that would be a better word, more theme to everything. Yeah. Um, 
And it's pretty much, you know, it's funny because this game uses the same system that my previous game did. This has the whole um, Yahtzee style dice rolling thing to get symbols to use to put on cards. Um, and where it's clue stuff, everything. You're, you, each card has little square placements on it for different things and you're placing dice on those to complete them, whether it's attacking something or whether it's trying to figure out the clue or move on to a different spot. Um, this game, you and I didn't notice this as much until I really got more into the Arkham LCG after you showed me that, but it kind of has that little feel to it, you know, because you're beating things and moving along to different things, mm -hmm. especially in the, in those, the Omens expansions where you're actually moving to different stuff so it's like they kind of use that as a building block to arkham lcg um but uh but yeah this one it, it's it's hard to win this game you know because you're ultimately whatever placement you're in or whatever deal you're trying to do you're trying to solve the deal before the um i think it's the omen counter can't remember what it's called at this point but uh, once it gets to a certain point, then your your old one will pop up and do crazy shit. And yeah, uh, there's that clock that keeps track. You know, that's your keeps track of your timing and stuff. But but uh, yeah, this one, it you can still find this for fairly cheap. It's not. I mean, it's out of print, but it's not like it's super expensive to find. Um, but uh, if you do want to dive into this, if this is something that you have interest you at all. Uh, you get the base game, but then you just go straight to those the omens games, omens of the ice, omens of the deep, omens of the pharaoh. Those those, those are what opens this game up and makes it a much funner experience. And then you can be cool and have the nice broken token thing like I have. That's this big wooden box. It looks like a museum that you take the lid off of the the museum, and all the storage is in there for everything. It looks pretty neat. Yeah, but, yeah. But uh, you could be cool. Or you could just get Arkham Horror Living Card Game. And no, and I know. Like, well, and this has that experience. dice. That, this has that dice deal, dice placement stuff. I mean, it's kind of a the one thing that pisses me off about this, and this was what FFG failed to do back then, was I want more dice, right? Yeah. And you just have that one set of dice, and they they some games they put out extra dice packs for you know Mansions mm -hmm. of Madness and stuff like that. They never did for this game, like. I'd have to buy another yeah. I'd have to buy another copy of the base game just to get the dice. Um but uh yeah, that is weird that they didn't do that. Yeah. So anyway, this one I this is one that sometime down the road. I know we have a lot of stuff on our list, but down the road this would be a fun one for you to try just with one of those omens uh storylines, just because oh, yeah. it opens it up so much more. Now again. Spoiler, yeah, it's not Arkham LCG. Arkham LCG is going to be much higher on my list, but even though there's 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 more there's more. Did, did you see? Are, there's more of that shit coming. Are you I still? Know. Is it, there, yep, did you I see, am. You, you, did you get the Covenant? Uh, yep. deal? <laughs> so it's yep, like ship shipping right now. Yeah, I'm so damn far behind on all that crap, but I just keep getting more and more. I think I am so, too at this point because I want to do it as a series on the channel, but. I'm doing yeah. I'm doing Aeon Trespass with the guy I've been doing it with. So yeah. we're focusing on that. And I just got it's just got... I know. It's <laughs> Why nuts. do I keep backing campaign games? You know, it's crazy. They're my favorite to play though. Yeah. So anyway, Elder Sign, it'll it's probably always gonna be on this list because it's just a fun dice chucker, really Dude, fun place. Did so you know this game this game came out when I graduated high school? Yeah. <laughs> it's fucking wild. Young pup I'm on twenty eleven. <laughs> back when fantasy flight was <laughs> an actual like renowned company yep those were the yep. days anyway that's it everyone that's it for this segment i hope you enjoyed let us know what you think of these games in the comments below other than that like comment share and subscribe and have a wonderful whatever time of day it is for you Hey everyone, thank you for watching and I really hope that you enjoyed the video. If you would like to see more of my content, go ahead and click that subscribe button and the bell to be notified whenever I upload any new content. If you feel like supporting the channel, you can go ahead and click that Patreon link to be taken to my Patreon and any help is truly appreciated. 
Other than that, stick around for any any other run-throughs or reviews or cool top tens or whatever I feel like putting on. Other than that, like, comment, share, and subscribe, and have a wonderful whatever time of day it is for you.